The first reading uh, this morning says, How long, O Lord, I cry for help, and you don't listen. I cry out violence, but you don't intervene. The fact is that we are suffering an epidemic of anxiety, of depression, and of just general craziness around. I've been taking a course in uh, developmental psychology for children. And one of the developmental tasks of children is to be able to distinguish between logical and illogical, which is very important to be able to do. But there's a third one, and that's the non-logical. That is truth, but it is not a necessarily a logical truth. That is where the gospel comes in. That is the truth of faith. Uh, and just as a, a child, I, I'll tell you a story of, of myself when I was in the four, uh, kindergarten. Uh, my little friend Johnny came up and said, oh no, this Santa Claus business, that's just dad and mom. That's just terrible, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, whoa, of course, I was a very, uh, you know, open, believing child. And I, so I said, well, I'm going to go talk to my father because he's going to tell me the truth. So I went to dad and I said, dad, what about what Johnny said? And my father said to me, he said, Joseph, Santa Claus is the spirit of Christmas. It is family. It is love. It is presence. It is celebrating life. And as long as you have Santa Claus, you will have that. <laughs> and you know, even then, I said, Dad, I got it. <laughs> you know, because we, cause we can, can understand that level of truth. And that is the truth of the gospel. The nature of faith is a truth that is non-logical. That's why Jesus can say that you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you'd tell the mountain to jump in the sea, and it would. Sometimes we need to believe in the impossible. We need to see beyond the surface of things, to see the truth that is beneath them. Like the apostles, we need to have faith. No cowardly spirit, we need to stir a faith which is strong, loving, and wise. A faith which is strong, which depends on the power of the Holy Spirit within. Loving the presence of Jesus in the world, in our lives, in our human, and wise, the Father the presence of God of love. So let's reflect on these just for a few moments here. First of all, one must have a strong faith to trust that God loves me even in the midst of my own brokenness. I need the courage of a patient faith to celebrate the richness of the non-logical part of myself. The fact is we are all broken, fragmented, and imperfect. You are not loved because you are good. You are loved because God is good. We all feel it. The stream lums, runs because you, and realities of life sometimes seem overwhelming and we become stressed. We wonder, what's the use? The grass starts looking very green almost everywhere else, and our relationships begin to lack the zip that they once had. We are tempted with discouragement, disheartened, and our dreams appear to evaporate. St. Francis de Sales said, we need patience with everyone, especially with ourselves. Matt Talbot, the Irish patron saint of alcoholics, 
he was a drunkard, uh, Dismas was a thief, Magdalene was a playgirl, and Thomas was out without belief. But there they are, up in heaven with their tilted crowns, looking down on us, supporting us in our struggles. Your wasness doesn't matter if your isness really is strong. A strong faith affirms the, my personal isness in the face of my frailty. It's what Paul Tillich in his Courage to Be said, I affirm myself, my essential worth, it's never on the line as far as God is concerned. So if you would like to repeat after me, in a living faith, faith, I am powerful even in weakness. Isn't that a nice thought? It, we need a loving faith. Love is the energy toward union. I need a persistent faith in my power. And the, the fact is that there is nothing more non-logical than love. And a faith in the power of my love. It's the most powerful force in the universe. How many people want to say that your dream of a world peace is dead? How many experts would mock your dreams of you, the unity of the human family? You have the courage or persistence to believe in your dreams. Interesting note, the gospel which says that when you've given all in love, you've just done what you should do. When looked at through the eyes of a loving faith, it's non-logical truth, makes sense. The act of love of its own world, its own reward. A parent who sits in an emergency room with their child is looking for a medal. They're doing it because it's the right thing to do and they love the child. Obviously, we say thank you and are grateful for acts of love, but my personal motivation has got to be deeper than that. Having shared my deepest self with your spouse, your family, your child, a friend, your authentic experience is that we actually are just useless workers and have done nothing more than our duty. We neither need nor want a medal. My love is detached from outcomes to secondary gain and to blouted egotism. This loving faith makes me pure, strong, and clear in the service of my love. I believe that couples who have lived together for years really understand this non-logical truth of the power of a loving faith. If you would actually like to say after me, with me, in living a loving faith, I am powerful in service. And finally, there's a wise faith. We need a wise faith that has experience, knowledge, and good judgment. It is not uh, too credulous. We don't want to throw our bodies on any old bonfire. There's a lot of non-logical thinking that doesn't have an ounce of truth in it. Like superstition, uh, it, it, like, like certain kinds of food, it's tasty, fast, but you'll starve if that's all you're eating. We surround ourselves first with people of faith, wise and thoughtful and prayerful people. We learn best by modeling. And we have, in my opinion, a great model in Pope Francis. He really is a, a worldwide model that we can truly be proud of in terms of his power and his commitment and his love. 
Connect with an old star, a spiritual tradition that's been around for the test of time, as Jesus himself was part of the wisdom tradition of Judaism. It went back hundreds of years. For the Christian, the heart of this wise faith is found in Scripture. It's miraculous what Scripture can do. You know, if you're having a problem on Tuesday, look ahead for the readings on Sunday and see what the readings say, and very often they will probably speak to you and give you some direction, some hope. Without prayer, there's no dream, no idealism, no miracles. And we know that Jesus, of course, was constantly going off into the woods by himself to pray, to connect with that non-logical truth. With wise faith, the engine of his miracles, and one's life follows one's thoughts. It's like a computer, garbage in, garbage out. Faith in, good choices out. Would you like to say after me? In living a wise faith, I am powerful in good choices. See, our church here, and I've got to tell you, I love this church. <laughs> this, is, in my opinion, is church the way church ought to be. It's a place where our dreams, enthusiasm, and faith live. Jesus gives us this faith, which is the greatest force in the world. It looks completely impossible, contains a powerful truth if approached in faith. We are here to find encouragement of the power of a strong faith, a loving faith, and a wise faith. A true place of mental health to protect us from the depressions and anxieties and craziness that are a part of the world out there. <laughs>